what you want. We want to thank you for the privilege that we could come together in unity to share your word, to learn from each other's feet, and so that we can improve our lives. Lord, you said in your word that we should get, in all our getting, that we should get wisdom and we should get understanding. Lord, I pray that as we cover this area of mental health, as we've, 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 we've received understanding in the area of financial health, as well as you know, um, building our homes in the right way, and that we will learn at your feet in Jesus' name. Just help us speak through me, and I pray that we all learn together in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just need access to share my screen, please, um, whoever the host is, so that I can um, share my presentation um, with everyone. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry, can you start, try to share now, please, and see if I can give you access, if you can okay. try to share. Okay, I'll try again, because it keeps saying that you've disabled it. Let me just, maybe I'm going too fast. Okay, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So praise the Lord. So by the grace of God, as I was introduced, my name is Dr. Jessica Joseph, Sister Jessica Joseph. I'm not based in Lancaster. I'm, I'm based in, in Scotland. I work in the county of Lanarkshire. Lancashire and Lanarkshire always get mixed up. Um, but by the grace of God, I live literally just in a suburb of Edinburgh, just outside um, Edinburgh, the capital city of Scotland. Um, and the Lord has been keeping us here. And, you know, in my day to day work, you see all aspects of health, birth, death, mental health, physical health, everything in between. And, you know, my job is to treat people holistically as well as other things. Um, by the grace of God, I've been asked to talk about mental health. That's a big topic on its own. So I hope that with the time um, I have allotted that we're able to go through it. Um, anytime I'm giving a health talk, this is one of my favorite things to talk about. Um, it's to talk about the area of health and how God wishes us to be in health and for our souls to prosper. Um, even um, and our physical well-being to prosper and it's important to look at the two things and to look after all aspects of ourselves so that we are the best that we can be and again I always cover the definition of health and um, you know according to the world health organization you know it's a state of complete physical mental and social well-being and it's not merely the absence of disease or infirmity you know, physical health, you know, I've taught last week, I spoke in a, um, to, to another group about the importance of exercise and diet and how that how that um, contributes to our physical health. In terms of men mental health, sometimes we shy away from it. I'll say, especially those of us that are Afro-Caribbean, we shy away from mental ill health and actually improving our mental health because that links to how well we are as Christians. It leads to links to how well we are as wives, as mothers in our jobs and everything else. You know, you can tell when somebody, you know, a stressed person, somebody that is not mentally well, you know, they, they can't handle stress. They can't handle something really simple. Whereas when your, your mind, your mind frame, the spirit of God and everything is working all right, you can deal with situations that you wouldn't have thought you were, you were able to cope with, you know, and social well-being links to that because we are not, we don't live in isolation. We live in a community. We live in a church community. We live in, we live in society. We live in, the, we, we, we are still in the world. And it's important that we are well in all those aspects. And it's just, it's not just an absence of, oh, I can stand up and I can go to work or I can stand up and I can cook today. No, that's not just what health is. It's about being well. And it's something to aspire to, as opposed to just saying, I, I, I have arrived, let me just settle. And I think it's important that we realize that so that we are always like the same way that spiritually we need to move on. We need to move higher. We need to keep growing. Also in our aspect of health, we will not neglect it and we'll keep moving on and moving higher and if you are healthy you are able to perform your roles all the roles that we have to perform as women in whatever capacity to the best of our ability 
So um, I felt I feel it's important to, to talk to women about this because as 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 sisters, as women, as wives, as mothers, you know, we are we are very good at looking after everybody else and not ourselves. And I and I really appreciate our last speaker talking about you know counting the cost before she accepts any assignments or any roles, you know, because. Um, in Song of Solomon, the beloved there said that you know, she, 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 they have made her keep out of vineyards, but her own vineyard she has not kept. So we look after everybody, you know, we're trying to please everybody, like our relatives back home, our husbands, our children, brethren in the church, you know, people that have an expectation or other from us. And, and then we just look after our own, you know, we look after our and it's important. Let's that. mute ourselves, please. Thank you so much. And it's important that we recognize the importance of keeping our own vineyards, keeping our own well being. Because, you know, I always I remember this analogy like whenever you fly, I'm sure all of us have flown in a plane at one point or another. And when you have the safety announcement, what do they say? They say, in the event that the oxygen mask come down, before you help someone else, put your own mask on first because there's no point you trying to help the other person like the child and then you pass out from lack of oxygen. You need to put your own oxygen mask on first. So you need to keep your own vineyard before you keep other people's own and learn to prioritize what the important thing is. So I'm just gonna briefly talk about mental health, um, you know, and it compasses several things, but just the main aspects of what we see. And I feel a lot of things are linked. I'm not gonna go deep, deep into psychiatry and talk about psychiatric diagnosis like schizophrenia or psychosis and what have you, because I think that's beyond the scope of this talk, but I'll talk about the more common presentation of mental health that we see in primary care. And, um, and, and how we manage it and how we can all help to improve ourselves and our well-beings. I think it's important to talk about it because especially because of COVID, we've seen a rise in low mood, we've seen a rise in anxiety, and it presents itself in different forms. Even people don't realize that they are more anxious. But you know, but you are seeing it with somebody who is trained to assess, you're like, everybody's more anxious. People are not nice, people are not polite to anybody anymore. You know, and it's all aspects of mental ill health um, presenting itself in one way or another. You know, does the scripture talk about mental ill health or, or issues with that? Yeah, it does. If you look in the scripture, David the psalmist here wrote about the soul being cast down, the spirit being being disquieted. You know, and what it's talking about there, the casting down, you know, sometimes you hear and David encouraged himself in the Lord as in he was low in mood, you know. And then when it says about disquieted, you know what, that's 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 old English speak for anxiety, you know, when you can't sleep, your mind is constantly going, ha, the home office kicked me out today, you know, how we pay the bills, ah, my people back home called me, they need this, how am I going to make the money, ah, my children, and then you're not sleeping, you're having poor sleep that's what it means about disquiet i know it's it's poetic speak but that's what it's talking about that is quiet within you that even when you're sat down your mind is on all the worries and all the concerns and you know and david is also in the second half of this or, or the third half of this verse you know it's telling us that we should hope in the lord and we should praise him because the lord is the health of our countenance countenance is old english speak for mood for you know your your how you present yourself your countenance you know your countenance is glad as in your mood is happy your spirit is happy you know your, your your heart is uplifted you know all those poetic speak and 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 and, and my god so if you see verses of scripture talking about counting and that kind of thing it's referring to mental health and you know seeing times of discouragement and you know heroes of faith people we've looked up to in the past in scripture the bible says elijah was subject to like like you know passions as we were you know elijah said kill me let me die you know that's like you know you, your mood has to be really low to get to the point where like i don't want to be alive anymore and we see that in scripture and the lord was still able to encourage him so you know if anybody says christians don't go through the ebbs and flows of life that's that's not true and i think it's important to recognize that those things happen so that we can steal ourselves and arm ourselves so that when the storms of life do come we have enough of a spiritual armory we have enough things in place that we are able to keep uh, cope with all those things in our lives and i pray the lord will help us in jesus name 
another verse of scripture, again, countenance, this was Nehemiah, you know, he heard bad news and, you know, and the bad news really, really affected his mood about the walls and about Jerusalem being desolate from the people that had returned from Babylon and he couldn't even hide it. And that's the thing, you can't hide it. It says, you know, why is your countenance sad, seeing as you are not sick? So it's like, it's not physical health. Physically, you are fine, Nehemiah, I know that. But your countenance is sad and this is sorrow of the heart. You know, so you can see that sorrow of the heart was so apparent that even the king could see that his favorite cock bearer was unable to, wasn't concentrating on the task. And, 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 and you see that in day-to-day -day life where there's mental ill health, where there's low mood, where there's anxiety, you know, it affects your day-to-day -day ability to perform. It affects your ability to, to, to deal with normal daily stresses, to, to deal with your job, to perform to the best of your ability in whatever roles you have to do. And it's very, very important that we learn how to deal with those things in our, in, in our lives. And I pray the Lord will help us. Like Nehemiah here, the trigger for him was hearing the bad news about Jerusalem. Likewise, everybody there's a trigger there's always something that tends to trigger the low mood and anxiety so when somebody comes into my office or nowadays a lot of times I deal with these things over the phone you know what's going on what's happened you know what's the trigger for this and most people say oh like I had a patient you know I spoke to yesterday and she said oh my marriage has dissolved I'm in homeless accommodation I'm you know so I'm like okay okay yeah that's that's a lot for anybody to deal with you know as in so I can understand why you're not sleeping and why all these things are going on you know so you so for people is that extreme for people is that is their job they feel that they are being bullied in the workplace you know for a variety of reasons and they're going through revenge policy and what have you or they are dissatisfied with the job they are doing or it could be marital issues like the first case or all my children or i'm trying to go into education and i'm struggling to balance it all and i just feel overwhelmed so it's important that like when when you speak to a health professional they find out what is really going on who is the person behind the presentation because everybody is different as to what the trigger is had a patient before who because the neighbor's dog backed all the time at night and she couldn't sleep she wasn't getting sleep so and sleep is really important for mental health she was becoming anxious she was like she found herself panicky she found herself hyper alert and it was really just because of the lack of sleep because of what was going on and she came in and she was so apologetic She's like I, I i can't understand why this is why i'm feeling the way I am, you know, like I know in my mind, I can rationalize that it's just a dog back, but the physical reaction, the rush of adrenaline, the anxiety was still the same, whether it was a dog barking or an arm robber coming in with a gun, or, you know, it's still the same physical reaction and the, and the stress on the body or the stress on the mind and the mental well-being, whether it's something as that we would count as trivial or something that, that we would say was, was less so. So and I pray that, you know, whatever it is in your life that you're finding it and you're looking in yourself, if this is something that applies to you, you're not like saying, oh, but why am I feeling this way? After all, it's not that big a deal. It's not just about what the cause is. It's about your body's reaction to it, your mind's reaction to it. And that's what requires treatment, requires help and counseling so that you can deal with those things in whatever way. I'm just going to talk a bit about what we call clinical depression. It's different from sadness. Sadness is you hear bad news like, oh, that's really sad. You cry, but life goes on. You're still able to cope. You know, it's 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 linked to you know the cl the clinical signs as we say in, in in medicine. You know, loss of pleasure and enjoyment, as in apathy. They just there's this lack of care. You know, people they stop caring about their physical hygiene. They stop caring about you know you, yeah, making an effort. You know, to get up in the morning. They care, they stop caring about their job. They stop caring about you know, um, family. You know, getting that get up and go. That drive just goes. It's like the switch went off and they have no drive to do anything. You know, or or, or or to achieve anything. You also see other physical symptoms like poor sleep and low mood, you know, and you can see other physical features like in the way they speak, you know, people that are depressed, I've said this before, that we, they, 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 especially when we're, when, we're, when we're doing what we call a psychiatric exam, you are looking at what we call the pressure of speech, also the train of thought. You know, somebody that their mental faculties are all there, they will have a conversation they will go through the conversation in logical way and what have you, and they won't jump. 
you know, they won't jump from place to place. Somebody that is like manic, you know, that's the other aspect, other extreme of, of depression, you know, which you call mania. They, like when I did my psychiatric placement and you're having to examine them, they are just changing topic. Like after I phrase, it's another topic, it's another topic, it's another topic. While somebody with depression, it's so, the train of thought, it's, it's almost scattered or they're not thinking at all, you know, like they start to talk and then they stop to talk or, you know, and then you also notice that their speech pattern, what we call pressure of speech is very low, very slow. Like you are, you are really struggling to follow them on because there's no animation in their speech. There's no, you know, there's no peaks and troughs. There's no areas in their speech that they're emphasizing. They're just like, when I woke up this morning, like I woke up every day, you know, or oh, sister, how are you? Oh, it is well, it is, sister is never smiley. She's never, you know, you don't hear animation in her speech or anything like that. If you know somebody like that in the church, just call and check on them. Are you okay? Because they may not realize it because they, maybe they've lived like that for so long and that's their normal. So, you know, I always say when people talk, it's not holiness, you know, Christ was holy and Christ, you know, when he had to call people vipers, and you can show that he didn't say you vipers because that makes no sense. You say you vipers, you know, you put emphasis on it, you know, and when, when it's time to bless, he will bless and you can hear that there will probably be a pattern to his speech. So when people talk and it's like, there's no, you know, even when Jesus preaches, you can hear when he, in Jesus name we pray, you know, you can hear that fluctuation in the speech. So if somebody's around you, there's no fluctuation in their speech. It's like their mind is so slow they are not really thinking straight when you're like just solve it like this 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 and they're like it's like they can't even they've not even gotten the first point of what you're saying start to ask yourself could there be more going on here you know because we have to be our sisters keepers and also if that's you you know start to ask yourself could there be more going on here you know and especially if there's a lot going on in your life that maybe you've put up with for many years um and you just think that that is normal you know, what we do, we do when, you know, a patient comes to us, they call us, we deal with them over the phone or they come into our office. You know, like I said, we review what the causes are or the things that are contributing to why people feel feel low in mood, why people's countenance is, is cast down, you know, why there's sickness in the heart or sorrow of the heart, as the scripture says. You know, then we look at, we arrange investigations because sometimes depression and anxiety is a symptom of, biochemical imbalances so the the chemistry the chemicals that our body uses from our food you know the hormones that our body makes you know sometimes if they are low or deficient or off one way or the other the symptom could be tiredness all the time it could be depression and anxiety so every doctor will be making sure that if they've not tested it in the last few weeks or months they'd be arranging a blood test you know to make sure that there wasn't it wasn't a physical cause and this is just a symptom of that so please if this is you don't bury your head in the sand it could be something as simple as your thyroid function being underactive or you being deficient in certain vitamins and minerals i say that because we africans we like to pretend if there's no diagnosis that means there's not Thing wrong no diagnosis is just putting a name on what you have been experiencing so the problem is still there whether you go and get diagnosis or not so please if this is you what's the cost of a blood test just go for one just go for one you know um and so that you know if something just needs replaced or corrected it can be done and then also we'll discuss treatment options you know that's what we do you know because treatment isn't always oh there's this tablet off you go and you'll be happy you know, treatment could be, or oh, you need certain vitamins replaced. Okay, maybe you need counseling. You know, I've had patients, I remember I had a patient once, and um, she was a nurse, and um, she took an overdose at work, um, and came to see me as the GP the next day, um, and said, this was what I did. I told my colleagues, and they sent me to the ARD, and I'm off sick, off at work, and having to deal with that, and what, what's going on. And it was her marriage. It was her marriage, you know, the husband had issues with drink, he wasn't caring, she was the one carrying all the financial burden for years and everything, and she was just tired under that burden. And so, yes, we gave her medication because she needed it, because if you get to that point where you're suicidal and you're harming yourself, you, you do need treatment. 
Um, but the other aspect of treatment was relationship counseling. You know, even if it was individual counseling in the relationship context, as well as both of them going for relationship counseling. And that was what we referred her for. And she had that for several months. Initially, the husband came, the husband said he didn't want to go, but she was in a better frame of mind because she kept going for that counseling to deal with the situations that were going on in her life. So treatment is not just, you know, there you go, you know, just take a tablet and go. It depends on what the cause is, you know, and there are so many, there are so many, um, there, there are so many agencies that are willing to help, including Christian agencies as well, with these kinds of things. Um, you know, that that that, you know, I pray the Lord will help us and open our minds to this. I'm just going to show us this wee diagram because I think it's always important for people to know where they are coming from and how it links to mental health in whatever form. Um, and it's called the biopsychosocial model of health. Um, before, years, decades ago, we used to look at health as, you know, physical health. I mean, we used to look at mental health almost as like the ugly stepsister to physical health. And it was like the Cinderella, it was neglected. Um, but over time, um, the, the body of health, we've come to realize that both things are linked. And especially as, as somebody who works as a GP, you have to practice medicine holistically. You know, it's not just the patient. It's not just the condition. It's the patient. It's the person with the condition, their family, where they fit into society and everything. So it's important to always have an idea about all these things and how they are linked one way or the other. So, you know, mental health, we see that in the center. But as part of that, you've got the biological aspect, which is your, your physical makeup, which is, you know, the genes that you inherited from your parents and their parents before them and their ancestors and genetic vulnerabilities. You know, if there's an element of disability or not, what your physical health and makeup and strength is, what's your temperament? You know, they are like, like, our, like our, our mother and the Lord from, from Medicine Region talked about reading books. Go and read books on temperament. You know, it really, really helped me to know what, what, I, what my temperament was, what my strengths are, what my weaknesses are, how to work on those things. And it gives you an insight into who you are and why you act the way you do when you're in certain situations so that you can start to learn, mm, this is my weakness, let me deal with it so that it doesn't become, always act as my Achilles heel. You know, so you've got your intellect, your IQ, you know, whether I would like to know some of us are more intellectually sound than others or we're faster in the way we process information and problem solve than others. Then, you know, linked in with that, your family relationships, the families you came from, your family experiences, whether you had trauma in childhood or adulthood, we're seeing a lot of people who are coming because of childhood trauma and they have personal, what we call personality disorders in their personality makeup because of how they were brought up it's like <laughs> the foundation is destroyed you know they don't know how to delay gratification they don't know how to have stamina you know the endurance diligence because of the the dysfunction in which they were brought up you know and, and they are now adults so it's like dealing with a, a toddler throwing a tantrum but they are now 40 and as opposed to a toddler shouting in the house, they will tell you, oh, I've taken an overdose. You know, you see patients like that, you know, because they are trying to get that same reaction that a toddler would get from negative behavior. So, you know, so you see that they've now changed the definition from what we call personality disorder to complex childhood trauma. You know, people who have been abused as children, whether physically, sexually, you know, or, or, or what have you um, and and a lot of us maybe that's not what we've dealt with but we've dealt with trauma you know i know you know by the grace of god the generation of us that were born in the church we we're born up brought up in christian homes we didn't really have to deal with you know family dynamics that happened in african home polygamy the competition and rivalry between stepmothers i have mother half sibling that you you share one parent but you're not really siblings in heart because your mothers are competing and all of that and those things have trauma and you see people that come from such a background, they are very wary of trusting others. Why? Because their own enemies were those of their own household. And you, you know, you, you can't say that, you can't separate that from them until the grace of God works in them. Um, as opposed to people who grew up in, you know, loving household, parents protecting them from all of that drama, they didn't really have to deal with a lot of complexities in life early on. They are more open 
they are less suspicious. So you you so when you see some things, try and understand the background of which the person is coming from, so that you can deal with them with understanding. You know, you also look at why your coping skills. As Africans, a lot of us are taught when you are upset, you just shout. You know, you just shout and gesticulate. Hey, I'm not happy. And then that. Mm -mm. In this country, you can't do that. <laughs> they will call you aggressive. <laughs> it's not a coping skill. So, you know, whereas, you know, you sit down, you look, okay, what is the issue? What's the problem? Okay, this, okay, what factors led to this problem happening? Just think for five minutes. Oh, okay, it's like A led to B, led to C. Okay, how do I counter? Okay, I mean, this hot spot now. How do I deal with A, B, and C? Okay. I can maybe deal with A like this. Okay, deal with B like this, deal with C like this. And you're just thinking, you're not shouting, you're not, you're not, you're not, you know, you're not doing that. And then you say, okay, you just work on each thing bit by bit. You know, what's your coping skill? As opposed to just, I'm stressed. Everybody leave me alone, Joe. I'm not doing anything again. You people don't appreciate me. You're not, you're not asking, you're not making any requests. You're not saying, ah, my husband, I'm really stressed. I'm really feeling overwhelmed. I'm really feeling under the pressure. Do you think maybe for the next week or two, you know, that's what we call foresight. Do you think maybe for the next week or two, maybe you can give me a hand with this or that, you know, just so that it lightens the burden so that I don't break down. Cause like, I really feel like the stress is getting to me. Why not be proactive, deal with some of these things before you get to a point that you're just shouting and everybody's running away from you in the house, you know, or brethren are keeping away from you because you are not looking ahead to say, ah, Maybe I'm taking on too much. Maybe I'm saying yes to too many things. Maybe I'm not planning my time ahead. So that's what we mean when we're talking about coping skills. Also, why are your social skills? You know, some of us, we, 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 are, we are extroverts, but we've not learned to learn in, let introverts that are with us talk and we dominate. And so you find that introverts are very good at avoiding situations they don't like. So you find that the introverts start to avoid you and they are wondering, why are they avoiding me? You have what we mean about social skills. Can you read the room? Are you emotionally intelligent? Are you attuned to mm, the way this person did the face? Even though they didn't say no, because they're not an extrovert, they may not open their mouth and say, this is, uh, but their body language is telling me that they are not quite in agreement. Okay, let me temper, maybe let me use style and draw them out and ask them what their thoughts are. You know, those kinds of little things. And also as introverts, maybe you also need to learn, if you're an introvert, to once in a while just state your point, you know, just speak up. It's not a fight. And a lot of times because you don't talk much, people want to really hear what you have to say. You know, this person ha probably has a lot to say. She's not talking much. So, and then you'll see that people will listen to you, you know, and, and pay attention to the point you have to make. So social skills, both aspects need to balance it out. Don't overly dominate a conversation. Remember a conversation is two way, you know, or, or multiple. And also don't always be on the receiving end. Sometimes learn to, come up so that's what i mean about social skills and you know that's linked to emotional intelligence there are books on this christian books on this and um, you know if it's something that you want to look into a bit more you know obviously your social circumstances the family circumstances your school the pairs your church community all those things and if you're on medication some medication they have certain side effects that will make you feel one way or the other you know and all those things link to your mental health and well-being i think it's important to see that so that you don't just say mm, mental health there's no such thing as mental health you realize it. there is such a thing as mental health and it's very complex and it's multifaceted so if you know that your weakness is you have a temperament that can be quite abrasive and you know can put people off go and read about it go and learn okay maybe in this situation this is how i normally handle things and this is how other people because of their temperament actually view it next time i will try and handle it like this and bit by bit by the grace of god as you pray it into your life you start to see adjustments and you start to see things changing all these things help your self-esteem help you feel empowered help you feel better about yourself as opposed to just saying this is the way god made me if they can't put up with it that is it you won't go far that way and you will not feel happy you will not have joy if you don't reach your potential simply because for example your temperament or your social skills or your coping skills were your achilles heel you know and i pray that as we learn ways to cope with these things the lord will help us in jesus name so what are other contributors to depression? Obviously, we've looked at that diagram there. But malnutrition, you know, and I don't mean malnutrition in terms of uh, whether you're fat or slim. You know, a lot of people in the Western world, we are malnourished. 
And it's not that we don't have enough calories. We don't eat enough vitamins and minerals. And those things are so important for the body to work. They are so important for, you know, you use these, these chemicals to, for the brain, for your nerves, for your nervous system. And a lot of people are deficient in these things. A lot of my patients, they come in with low mood. They say they are tired all the time. I say, okay, let's go and do blood. And I'm sure they're like, this is Dr. Joseph. Every time she will say, go and do blood, you know. And then you go and do bloods. And you call them. Um, you actually have no folic acid in your blood. As in the lower limit of normal is 3.9. And the lab can read up to 2 nanograms per liter. And yours is less than 2 nanograms per liter. Meaning that there is none. The lab is unable to pick up any. No wonder why you are tired. No wonder why you are stressed. No wonder why your mood is low. We need to replace you. We need to give you so many months worth to replace it. And, I'm, and as women, you know, that's why I always say, if you are planning, if you know that when you are in courtship, you want to give birth straight away. Sister, please start taking your multivitamins before you get married. Don't react because you need these things. You get pregnant, you don't take any multivitamins. You get pregnant again, you get, and your body has been using all those things up to build another human being. Why won't you feel stressed? Why won't you feel tired? Why won't you feel low? When your body is actually deficient in a lot of things that it needs for your brain and your mental well-being. You say, ah, because I'm eating a uh, pound dough and eating soup. Doesn't mean that you're getting everything you need. You know, so that, that's why, you know, you see health professionals saying, are you taking this? Are you taking your vitamin D? Are you taking this? Are you taking that? It's not just because we just want you to take it for the sake of taking. Because these things are linked to how your body functions and also your mental health and your mental well-being. So please, when I say we're well, malnourished, a lot of us don't eat enough vegetables or we overcook the vegetables that we put in our pots. You know, we cook it for 30 minutes. All the vitamins are gone. They've evaporated. You know, so when we're talking about malnourishment, it's all those little things, you know, that add up. Family stress. It's important to pace yourself in family life. Please, our young sisters, Again, space your family. Eh? There's no point having one after the other, after the other, there's no gap. And you've not even sat down, do I have a job where I'll get maternity pay? You know, you've not even looked at, can the family cope with this and things come up and then you people are overwhelmed because you've taken on too much too soon. I'm not saying don't have as many children as you want, but if you are not in a position that you can cope you know, you, you have adjusted and able to cope with it and you take on another one, it puts stress on the family and, you know, and it puts stress on you because as women, we are the ones that deal with majority of those things. So family stress can also include in-law issue, dealing with family back home, you know, and all of those things. And they can contribute to low mood, especially when as the woman, you know, if your in-laws have a lot of influence on what is happening in your home and as women, we, we take in everything they say, all the criticism they say, and yeah, like, this is what they said. If that what they said, switch off the phone. You don't have to talk to them every, if every week they, you call them and it's insult, switch off the phone for three weeks. Listen to the word of God. Let the word of God empower you. Let the word of God fill your mind with positive things. Let the word of God build you up. Let the word of God renew your mind to the point that even if they shoot arrow with speech, it, it, it just bounces off. So it's also what, what are you hearing? What are you listening to? And our mother spoke about building a godly home, about learning how to respond in a time of stress. It's linked to your mental health. If you can cope with stress and you see if you're in a, a situation and you're like, oh, okay, actually this thing is stressful. It's better I don't speak right now. Even if you're an extrovert, normally you express yourself. You say, no, if I say, you ask yourself, if I say something right now, is it going to be positive? And what's the likely consequence of this thing that is burning me to say? You know what? The Bible says, if a fool is quiet, the fool is even considered wise. You, won't, you, you can't get into trouble for not saying something. It's usually the words we speak that put us into trouble. So when you are in a time of stress, calm down. Don't react straight away. Go and have a breather. Just, you know, and so that you can learn to cope with these things and don't always surround yourself with all the stresses that are coming up from here and there because it can lead to depression. We've seen people depressed. Oh, they are waiting on the Lord for children. It's not even about the waiting on the Lord for child. It's all the negative word they are hearing from Nigeria. If that's all you are going to hear, switch it off. Pray to the Lord. Co commit yourselves to the Lord so that you are not adding that to your, to your, to your lack of well-being. 
obviously financial stress links to the family and all sorts, immigration and all those kinds of things, they contribute to depression and low mood. I've seen brethren because of fighting with home office, they're having panic attacks because they're having to go to the court and things like that and having to have things deal, dealt with. So it, it, it's, it, these things do affect us and they do affect our, our well-being and things. The most important tool to have in mental health and mental illness is to have insight. Know yourself. Know yourself. Am I okay? I will know if you're okay. You have to know if you're okay. And don't lie to yourself that you're okay when you know you're not. So have insight. In fact, the only time we admit people who are severely unwell with mental illness is when they lack insight. If they are telling me that they are fine and they are, and they are not fine, that's when Mental Health Act comes into play. And we say, okay, we're taking away your civil liberties and we are going to keep you in hospital by force. So that shows you how important it is to have insight, to know yourself. Am I okay? okay. And it's when you know that you're not okay, you look for help in one way or the other, as opposed to just burying it in the sand. You know, we've talked about, 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 about words and how they can affect us, you know, and, you know, I, I, and it's important to speak positivity to your life. That's why I said, if your in-laws are giving you trouble or it's getting to a point, switch off the phone. If I've after three weeks, hey, we've not, ah, sorry, oh, ah, my phone was off, that's all. Yeah. at least you spent a few weeks you have not had to deal with all that negativity and you spend the time itself on the phone you are saying sorry 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 you are spending that time in the, in the presence of the lord you spend that time building up yourself and your faith and all those things so it's important that you prioritize your time appropriately if something is not going to edify you must you do it and must you do it frequently? Ask yourself that so that you can prioritize your time, you strategize all those things in a way that will help you and build you up. What do we do in, 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 in what do we advise patients to do? You know, if they are deficient in one thing or the other, or they could improve by, by, by building up stuff, we go into their diet, you know, you need to eat the right stuff. It's like somebody said, you don't put rubbish fuel in the Ferrari, in a Ferrari, in a Ferrari tank because that Ferrari will not perform to the best of its ability. So why will you put rubbish food inside your body that is better than a Ferrari? You know, put the right, put the right ingredients in so that you get the bright outcome out. Exercise is important. Why? When you exercise, your body relieves stress. It gets rid of stress from the body, gets rid of that adrenaline in a healthy way. And also your body releases endorphins, feel good hormones that make you calm make you relaxed, make you seated, makes you satisfied, you know? So the, when I say endorphins, I'm sure we've heard of people being addicted to morphine and heroin. Endorphins are the same chemicals released when a drug addict takes morphine and heroin. And exercise can do that. So you can imagine the thing that makes people go and steal from people to go and buy drug, you can get it for free by exercise. Why not exercise? You know, and God has made it available for us, for our body to produce ourselves by us exercising and, and doing all those things. And we should focus on renewing our mind. That's what we do with CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. If you are somebody that is naturally an anxious person, because we have different personality types. Some people are as cute as a cucumber. What we say that they are, they are almost horizontal self. <laughs> you know, if stress comes, it's like the stress that like they're lying down for the stress to pass. They are not, the stress doesn't even hit them. Whereas you have other people who are of an anxious personality type, you know, ah, this person looked at me, ah, maybe they didn't like what I said, ah, maybe they didn't like what the way I looked at it and they're always ruminating, always ruminating. So those kind of people we, we do what we call cognitive behavioral therapy, which is just when you face this situation, how do you normally respond? Okay, instead of responding this way, why not look at it like this, like this, like this, like this, and try this, 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 and that until it becomes a habit and they find that they are less likely to react in a negative way to any situation, okay? And, and I pray the Lord will help. And you know, Romans chapter 12, verse two talks about renewing our mind. And it's important when we talk about growing in faith. Yes, you gave your life to Jesus Christ and you are born again, but the product of your upbringing, the trauma and the things you face, they are still there. And Christ wants to fully get rid of it in your life. You know, that's why we talk about growing in grace, growing in faith, so that you are less likely, you know, we've heard that hint that says, some of self and uh, some of thee. And then the last verse says, all, none of self and all of thee. And that's what renewing of the mind does. You know, you get rid of self 
and the product of what self and your life before Christ and, 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 and the background you came from had, and it becomes more of Christ in you. And I pray the Lord will help us as we look at those things. Other aids to deal with depression and anxiety. This is just quickly talking briefly about, you know, about diet, you know, don't have too much carbohydrates, you know, try and try and balance, you know, try and balance the ratio of what you have on your plate. And even if you are having carbs, even if you are having carbs, try and have healthy, low, um, low GI foods so that you're not having swings and roundabouts because that surge in insulin and, 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 and surge in blood sugar can also affect your mood as well, you know, in terms of how you, you, you prevent. Variety of colors, let your plates be colorful. Why? All those colors you see in different vegetables, they are antioxidants, they are healthy chemicals that your body uses, your brain uses to keep you healthy. You know, healthy fats, talk about omega, I'm sure you heard about omega-3, omega-6, omega-9 fatty acids. They are very important for brain development. In fact, if you are pregnant, we recommend that you take it because it's very important for baby's brain to grow properly. You know, short window of eating. So that means you don't eat over to 18 hours. Maybe eat over six hours of a day, you know, and you top up with fluids, healthy fluids that will keep you about. Chamomile tea. Chamomile tea is actually made up of the building blocks for the chemical that we call serotonin that helps us feel satisfied, helps us feel calm. Serotonin. Antidepressants, what do we do? Antidepressants are just to help your body keep serotonin in the brain. And you have food stuff that have the building box for your body to make this thing. Why not make that part of your diet? You know, reduce your caffeine. Caffeine makes you feel stressed. Caffeine makes you feel anxious. You know, we have patients, their heart rate is very high. Resting heart rate is very high. Why? Because they drink too much caffeine. Or they're like, they come in, doctor, I have insomnia. Give me a sleeping pill right now. And then you say, you start asking them, okay, how much fizzy drink do you drink? How much coffee do you? And then I'm like, no wonder why you can't sleep. No wonder why you feel so stressed. Your caffeine intake is so much. Your body is going to be like hyper, hyper vigilant and hyperactive because, because caffeine does that. So obviously reduce your caffeine intake. Be aware that it's not just coffee and tea that have caffeine. Canned drinks, a lot of them have caffeine in it. If you look at, if you look at the list of the ingredients, green tea is very high in caffeine. So have a look to make sure that you're not always taking stuff that has that in it. Even chocolate has some caffeine to a certain extent. So obviously be aware of that. I always see your omega-3, your multivitamins, they are very, very important for helping you keep your energy up, having the right building block so that for your brain, for, for, for your muscles and the rest of your body so that, yeah, so that your body, your blood pressure is at the right level, your body is better able to cope with stress and you have the right hormones that are moving in the right levels in you. What other things should we do? Reflect, look at your life, look at your time. How are you spending your time? Is it that you, you have taken on too much on your plate? What ways can you reduce that? Another thing, you know, reflect. How can I approach these situations next time so that I don't have a stressful event or I'm better able to cope with the event and I'm not overly stressed, overly anxious? Change of mindset. One thing I've learned is it's important to learn how to say no. As women, we are people pleasers. So we say yes to everything. And we've not even sat down and reflected whether we can cope with the thing and what have you. I remember when I was training, my supervisor said something to me. He said, Jessica, remember when you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. So that means that you have to remove something from your plate to accept the new one. So if people give me an offer, I don't accept straight away. I go back. I've learned to go back, look at my plate. Is there something I can take off now? you know, or what have you, so that I can cope with all these things before I say yes to that other thing. And then I go back and give a response. You don't always have to respond straight away to most, most requests. You can say, can I get back to you in a day or two? That way you're not feeling, the way they were looking at me, I just had to say something. Even if they were looking at you, just say, can I get back to you in a day or two? I'll call you back. That way you can make a decision when you are away from the emotional pressure, emotional stress, are you able to think through things and able to study properly and then make a firm decision. As opposed to saying yes, then it actually is like, the, it's like the parable of the servants. One said he wasn't going and he went. The other one said he will go and he didn't go. They say, which one pleased the master? 
you know, and this was from Christ. So that's why it's important to reflect before you accept any new thing that is being given to you. And also you deal with the underlying cause. If it's your marriage, go and learn how to communicate as a couple. Go and learn how to deal with, how to deal with issues, how to, how to deal with the other external factors. If it's financial stuff, our sister has given us a very good talk on that. You know, learn how to manage your finances, learn how to live within your means and save so that you are not always trying trying to make ends meet and you're overly stressed because of money issues you know if you need to upskill so that you are you you are, you are you are worth more in the economical market please do that pay the price so that it can help you and what have you and i pray the lord will help us and another thing about exercise find an activity that suits you get moving you know exercise isn't running on the road I think we assume that you have to get track suits and what have you and run on the road. Me, once in a while, I go walking, but most of the time I do my exercise in the house, play a six minute video, play a 10 minute video from YouTube for exercises and stretches that, that I'm used to. I also use weights because I was always very athletic when I was young. You don't have to do like, you don't have to do marathon running. You can just dance. Okay, I'm going to set my favorite praise and worship song, my favorite praise song, and I'm going to dance and move certain parts of my body for five minutes. And you feel happy, you feel light. And if I, your children will even laugh at you, they will laugh with you, they will join. And it also brings joy to the home. And it's not always about the home being stiff and boring. It brings unity. It helps you people to know that you can have fun with the things of the Lord as well. Just be consistent. Do it three times a week if that's what you can do. If you can do four times a week, great. You know, and just make it a, a part of your pattern. And something is better than nothing. You know, just do a little as much when God is in it. Do something little, but just do it regularly and you will get the benefits from that. Other things, if you take the bus, get up a stop earlier than you normally do so that, you know, at least you've walked a few more yards, you've done some walking, you've exercised your limbs, your body has gotten more oxygen flowing around it, your brain is feeling sharper and what have you. So just do something. Even if you say, okay, it's only two minutes I can spare today. And you say, okay, I'll just hold a chair and I'll squat up and down for two minutes and I'll set it on my phone. It's better than not doing anything at all. You know, and you get your heart rate up and your body will thank you for it. And you feel so much lighter. You have so much more energy. And, and I pray the Lord will help us. Again, I've talked about exercise, walking in tent, including your children in those things. It's a time of bonding. If you are working with your daughters, with your son, oh, tell me what you did today. In fact, if your son is athletic, it's from when I was a youth, I noticed that the boys that went to sports, they used to get ankle weights. I get I bought some ankle weights. I have three kg ankle weights. If I go walking with my neighbor, I put my ankle weights on so that I get more of a return from the walking than normal. Why? Because I saw that the boys used to do that and athletes used that to train because they used to do football. So you can even learn from your children and say, ah, mommy, what you are doing is old school. This is how we do it. They say, okay, ah, teach me. And they'll even be like, ah, their mom is actually thinking that they know something. Instead of always saying, you don't know anything, Joe, listen to me. And that fosters bonding, that fosters, you know, joy and things like that as well. Take your children to the park if they are young kids, spend some time there with them, just have fun, you know, and let them know that, you know, there's fun in serving the Lord, there's fun in family time, and you're also getting the health benefit. Drag your husband out. You say, honey, let's go for a walk so that we can gist. Eh? It's not always, ah, you come home, I cook dinner, you sit down, and that's, no, in fact, spend quality time together. And, you know, all these things will help foster unity in the family, help improve health of everybody in the family, and I pray that the Lord will help us. These are things I do as well in my own home, so I'm not just talking out of, yeah, I'm not saying do what I say, I don't do what I do. This is something that we do, and, and the Lord has been helping us as well. Um, You know, Again, you know, the Lord has said to us and the word of God talks about the benefits of these things. And he's saying it to us so that we have peace. You know, when you're like, why is the church talking about health? Why is it talking about well-being? Why is it talking about mental health? It's so that you have peace. In this world, all of us know it's trouble from birth to death. You have to work. If not, you will not eat. You have to deal with stress to make, the, to get the work, to do what have you, what have you. So all this is to help us have peace so that we can be of good cheer. We can have that joy. We can always remember that oh, in all these things, the Lord has overcome the world. Even when you hear about, oh, there's flooding here, there's flooding here. It's, ah, it's like the Lord is coming very soon. No? Ah, the signs are really here. And you're looking forward to it, to the expectation. Oh, ah, hey, after this place, will I be left behind? Set yourself. That's why I said, know yourself. Know yourself. And if you know yourself, the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. 
other tips for dealing with stress, prioritize whether you need to physically write it down and stick it on your fridge or you stick it by your bedside or you buy, you know, in the office where they have that annual planner and they put who is off this week, who is off, go and get it. There's like two pounds, three pounds in stationery shop. Plan your time, prioritize, put it on your phone that you're going to do this, you're going to do that. Delegate. The task you can delegate to your children, delegate to your children. The task that only you can do, that's the one only you can do. You understand in the workplace if you have a colleague whose job is to do this to do that delegate the task to them and then it's only the one that you can do that you do before you take on something count the cost also pace yourself you don't have to take on everything all at once you take you reflect how has that gone has it gone well do we have capacity to take on more more stress or a new project then when you when you look and see that you're able to do that then you are able to move on and you carry. That's why I said about our younger sisters with childbearing. You don't have to have three children in three years. You can have them in six. You can have them in seven. Eh? Please pace yourself. Don't either you discuss and you say, I want these many children. It doesn't mean that you have to do it all at once. It's important to sit down. Okay, now we've adjusted. Is the family okay? Okay, yes, it's okay. Okay. Are we ready to take another one? Okay, we're ready to take another one. Okay, when do we want to start? In fact, you and your husband say, okay, when do we want to start to start trying to have those are the things that you that's what I'm saying about having communication. Don't just let life happen to you. Be 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 intentional with your life, be intentional with how you want to achieve and accomplish what you want to achieve and accomplish. I pray the Lord will help yourself. Know yourself, know your nobody should know your weakness more than you. You should know yourself more than anybody else so that you know me i know this is what i need to work on and you start working on it reflect every time once in a while you look at yourself okay like i've come fine this aspect too it's like these people that used to annoy me i don't react to when they annoy me again okay this other aspect how can i and you continue to work on it and the lord will help you and always reflect reflect you can always do better you know, I remember when I was training, it was so frustrating because GP training, you have to do reflective writing. In fact, you have to do three reflective writing every week. And, I, and I'm like, I've done this case where my supervisor will say, but could there have been something you could have done? I said, but what else do you want me to do? And actually, it's better to have that frame of mind because you're going to be in something as a marathon. Always think, even when you're like, I've done very well. And like, is there an aspect, even if it's two seconds of adjusting like this, that I could have done better? And that's what reflection is about. Okay, what situations, what things are in me that could make this thing better, that it could have even been better than what it is I've done before? What things are in me that led to this situation happening? Even if, yes, that other person, those people, yes, they are racist. Yes, they are shouting ahead. But what about your characteristic? Could you have handled the, that situation wiser? That even with their racism, even with their, all their bias, you 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 go scot free, and you're even scaling higher than them. That's why you need to reflect. Because if you just say it's their fault, it's their fault, you will never grow. That's why you look. Mm, is there a way? Even though yes, this person has scale leg, this person has this problem, this person is like this. They look at me like this. How can I deal with them with wisdom so that you know? Like there's a proverb. You sometimes you have to call madman king if you want to pass. When you pass, you can say, oh, you're a madman. <laughs> Sorry for you. But that's what we mean about reflecting. Could I have done this better? Could I have been more humble? Could I have handled this thing in a better way? And I pray the Lord will help us. Be organized. And you should know what you're doing with every minute of your day. Even if you factor in rest. You should factor in rest. No, I'm talking about organization. Organization is not just, oh, I have to cook. Oh, I have to clean. Oh, I have to do this. Oh, I have to do that. Be organized. Factor in time for rest. Factor in time for spending with the children. Factor in time for spending with your spouse. And when I talk about delegation, look, it costs about 20 pounds for somebody to iron like how many, like, like 50 pieces of clothing. Do you have to do it? Can't you pay somebody else to do it? Like 50p per item. Can't you give somebody else that job to do instead of standing there for 20 hours? Yeah, ironing clothes, ironing clothes, ironing clothes. Do you have to do it? Can't you delegate it to somebody else so that you can spend time gisting with your children? If you are cooking, let your children be involved with you. Even if yes, they make a mess, they are learning. You are spending time together. You are fellowshipping together. You are gisting. You are laughing and what have you. Other thing is being the moment. As women, as immigrants, we're always thinking of the next, the next step we have to get to, the next achievement we have to get. Why not just enjoy where you are for now? Yes, you still have goals, you are still working to them, but as you have achieved something, just 
enjoy it for a day or two, enjoy it for a month or two, you know, and, and just be in the moment and be thankful, count your blessings in the situation that you're at whilst you're looking towards improving and working for the next thing and be thankful a joyful heart, you know, the Bible says, you know, the merry heart, you know, it lifted the spirit. If you are always, oh, but we have not, ah, sister, well, look at where God has brought you so far. You know, count your, once in a while, just stop and say, you know what? I thank God my children are healthy. Ah, I thank God, you know, I'm married. There was a time I was praying for God's will in the era of marriage. Ah, actually it has happened though, and we have moved on. In fact, I'm not even thinking about that aspect of my life again. Okay, before we used to share, we used to do house share. Now we're not doing house share. And least thank God now, whilst they are preparing for the next one, because if you are like that, and if you are more thankful, and you are able to thank God for the little things, he's more likely to give you the bigger things. And it will help you not always feeling stressed all the time. Yes, it's good to have goals. It's good to have things to aspire towards, but there's something to learn in the moment you are in. And remember to balance both things up as well. Finally, fill yourself with the presence of God. The presence of God, you know, in the presence of, of the God, there, 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 there is peace, there is favor, there is faithfulness. All the fruit of the spirit will manifest in your life. And don't forget, fruit of the spirit includes temperance, self-control, you know. So if you are talkative, fruit of the spirit will control yourself so that you don't overly talk, you know. And, 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 you know, there's mercy, there's faithfulness, you know, all these aspects, there's love, there's joy, there's peace. And you get that in the presence of the Lord. Let part of your coping mechanism be prayer. Let part of your coping mechanism be the word of God. In fact, you can even play the word of God to put you off to sleep so that uh, you wake up and you are still hearing the word of God. Instead of just the news and all the things that just feel anxiety in your heart, fill yourself with the presence of the Lord carry him with you. If you are in a drive and you are driving on the road, pray to the Lord. You can, the Lord wants to talk to us. He wants to have a conversation with us. In fact, when you get to work, you say, God, as I'm going to make decisions today, as I'm about to start my shift, as I'm about to start my job, help me to make the right decisions. Holy Spirit, be with me. And the Lord will cover the atmosphere. He will cover you for that whole day. And you will see the day go smoother than when you try and do things yourself. So I pray that the Lord will help us as we go through these things. Like the book of Proverbs says, a merry heart doeth good like medicine. And it is true. Do you know that, you know, the time of the time where we have the most heart attacks in the world is during World Cup finals. Why? Because people are stressed. And actually people that are merry, they are happy, they are wholesome, they are less stressed. They are less likely to get all this cardiovascular disease because that stress is not just that you feel stressed or that you are angry all the time. Your body produces hormones that affect, you know, some of us are fat because we are stressed, because we are producing cortisol. We are producing cortisol, which is the stress hormone. And so our body isn't even in a healthy state to process the foods that we eat properly. So we're getting truncal obesity. We're acting like we have a certain condition that we call that we, that we call Cushing's disease, where they have too much steroids and stuff like that. And it causes our blood pressure to go up and it causes this and it causes that. Merry heart do it good like medicine. And I pray that the Lord will help us. Even as we're here in COVID, look, yeah, you are not here in COVID more than me. I'm sometimes speaking to people, they say, my husband died last week, I have COVID symptom. And my husband, went, you are not dealing with that. Just, just to put it in coin, you know they say, oh, there's COVID passport. Your heart is like this. Somebody sent you something on WhatsApp. That's why your heart is going up and down like that. Please focus on the right things. And you'll be the one to inspire joy in people. Even if they say, you say, ah, I have, the Bible says, if it's only in this life, we have hope. We have all men most miserable. So you say, you know what? I have a living hope. Go back to the Father. Go back to the Lord. Go back to the word of the Lord. I say, God, make my heart like medicine. Make my heart merry. Even if, yes, I don't have enough money. Even if, yes, they are saying this one, they are saying that one, they are saying that they are coming soon. Make me ready. Make me full of joy. Let me fill my heart with the positive things, with the right things. Let me make sure I'm doing all these other aspects in my life. And let me look to you. You are my hope. You are my help. You are the health of my countenance and you are my God. And look to him. So there are other people around you. When patients come in, throughout COVID, they come in uh, and they're anxious. So I say, ah, I have to tell some of them, switch off the TV. You say, ah, what they're seeing on the news. They cannot even leave their house. They are so afraid. I say, switch off the TV. For the next two weeks, you are not watching the news. Doctor's orders. So that because you are fretting. 
you are fretting because this is all you're surrounding yourself with just negative news go and do something else that you like to do go and potter about in the garden go and do this go and do that go and tidy your house the house that you've not had the chance to tidy for how many years you're at home self-isolating you're gonna clean your house go and do something positive with that time and that's why i tell them and they come back ah, actually they are less anxious now because they've not been listening to news i say yeah you see so please Fill your word with the word of God. As we are, as we are being wise, as, as, as we are being wise as serpents, you know, seeing what is happening about, as we are, as we are looking towards what is happening with our children, it's not to respond with, oh, you deal with the situation, you put it in the hand of the Lord, you ask for wisdom, you deal with it, and you move on. Don't carry it in you, don't lose sleep over it. Don't, you know, if you lose, if you are giving that thing more power than God. And you think not the Bible says it gives his beloved sleep. And sleep is really important for mental health. We know that you're starting to, patients that tell me they've not slept for a week, I know I'm in trouble. If I don't give them sleeping tablet, they could get admitted to hospital and they're depressed because sleep is that important. Your body uses it to renew itself. The brain uses it to refresh itself. So please don't lose sleep over these things. Take it back to the Lord in prayer. Exercise before you go to bed, have a shower, get your room to a nice cool temperature, like just play verses of scripture after you've prayed and you will see that you will fall asleep with the word of God and with the Lord enveloping and covering your room with his atmosphere. And I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus name. Our sister talked a lot about financial stress. So I'm not going to talk too much about it. Find a side gig, you know, a side hustle. That's the modern speak for it. She's talked about budgeting, be creative, Learn to upcycle the things that you have about the house. You don't always have to go and buy something new. A can of spray paint, a bit of uh, sanding paper and uh, French polish is enough to renew some furniture pieces that you have. There are so many There are so many videos on YouTube. I've done that with my furniture before. In fact, I had dining chairs. I used Ankara fabric. I changed the cup and we used it for so many years after that. Something that we got from charity shop. So there are ways to do things. These are always, ah, let me go and spend 700 pounds on a new furniture with I own will be unique I have not spent that much money on it you know the woman the, the widow that saw Elisha and Elisha said go and borrow your vessel she didn't know what she had in her house ask the Lord for insight Lord show me what I have in my hand show me what I have in my house so that the creditor will not carry me and my family to be bond people you know, so that's why we say when we talk about side hustle, ask the Lord to give you insight to the talents you have, to the things that you have that will expose you so that you can generate income and are no longer a, a, a servant to, 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 to the lender. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. There are other, there are so many charities available that can give us education on how to manage money. Uh, in addition to what our sister said, Christians Against Poverty, they run free courses. I think it's about three or six week courses to teach people about how to manage money, to get Christians out of debt. You know, there's Citizens Advice Bureau as well. They give support, Money Matters as well. They give people advice in one way or the other. And these are free agencies that can give you, that can, can, that, that can empower you so that you can have an idea about how to manage your money, how to make your money work for you so that you're not always a servant to the next shift or you're not always working, or you're working smart, you're not working hard because you're always having to work to get money. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Again, you know, about relationship, family relationship stress relates. You know, it's, it's, it's a relationship count, um, charity. There are also Christian um, fam, family 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 um, relationship counselors. And the reason why I say that is that if you have a troublesome child, we treat the whole family. We don't treat the child. The child is the symptom of the family setup they are in. So the whole family needs to look at how they change their dynamics. You know, as the parent, you have to change how you approach the child. What's my child's temperament? What's my child's love language? If I want to get the best out of this child, how can I change the way I speak to the child or approach the child to get the best out of it? So these are the things that even in child psychiatry, that's basically what they do. They teach the parents how to parent and take the child out of that environment, give the child boundaries, you know, learn to, to learn how to talk to the child properly and do family, family, uh, family, uh, fa fa family therapy, you know, and other things, spend time together. It's not just, oh, let's go to church. You drive them in the car, you come home, spend time together, you know, aside from family devotion, just say, let's just go for a walk. Let's just go to the park. At least you are in a beautiful part of the country. 
there are lots of things to see and do. Have you ever told your city that you are in to see the sites, to go to the museums? Why not do that as a family as, as the holidays are coming up? Even if you just say, okay, one day in these six weeks that is summer, let's go and do something. You know, and I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Again, read the word of God and apply that to your life. And just to end up our conversation, remember that all these things we're talking about is because the Lord wants us to prosper. And it's not just that you have money. If you have money, you don't have wealth, you are not prospering at all. You know, so the Lord wants us to prosper, especially in this aspect of mental health and to be in health even as our soul prospers. And I pray the Lord will help us as we've had time to reflect on this and to look at these aspects in our lives in Jesus' name. So let's just bow our heads to pray um, as we move on to, um, to, to the other sessions of, of the program. Father, Lord, I just want to bless and exalt your holy name. I thank you for helping us to look at this aspect of our lives because more so than physical health, our mental well-being really affects us. It really affects our families. It affects our children that we are bringing up who are who are the next generation and the church as a whole lord we pray that as we've looked at these aspects even more than what has been talked about we will go 